Hey guys, I mentioned it before, but it's a good idea to check after a few videos if everything is working correctly. And I noticed there's quite a few issues that we could fix. So in this video, we'll just be focusing on improving and fixing things. So first thing I have done is something small, but I don't want to do changes of screen just in case you did the, exactly the same thing. So in our rarity rich text data table, when we were setting color, I put the wrong one in the Epic. So now I got the same color for Epic and Rare. To fix it is just open your player blueprint, get rarity color, copy the epic color, hex value, and paste it in here. This is just a small fix. Now, when we are creating the notify widget, I mentioned there is a link in the description to download the icon. If you haven't done it, you can just import the icon into Unreal Engine. Move it to your icons. And in our widget, Notify Widget, we just need to click on Notify Image and change the image to the Load Icon. It has transparent background, so it actually looks quite nice. You can compile and save. Now, if you were to play the game and you pick up the items, open the inventory, you can see the notify is actually behind the player in inventory. We don't want that because when we later crafting the items or anything, we need the, to notify the player what is happening. So to fix that, we will go to player blueprint event graph and here when you adding it to viewport usually you can just open it up and change the order to one that will move it to the front so compile and save and now you might also have noticed that if you create a widget and then open the inventory it never goes away and that is because we set time dilation in the inventory to like next to nothing. So the time doesn't move and our delay to hide this doesn't actually work. So at the moment you can't set in the Unreal custom time dilation for widgets. So we need to do it different way. Since the animations are still working while the delay is on, we can just extend our animation to do all this. So remove everything after the first animation go to designer in here open the animations if you don't have it docked in a layout just open animation and dock in layout now select the border select the sliding animation and now after this one second when we're sliding it in we will do another three seconds so move it to four and just we will add another keyframe which basically won't do anything because the value will be the same but it will give us extra extra three seconds of animation so add a keyframe and now after maybe 475 we will slide it back in so we'll do alignment zero add another keyframe and now if you were to play the animation, it will slide in, wait three seconds and then slide out. Uh, you can also do another, it will only let me go to 550. So add another keyframe and this will just be empty animation again. And after that we will remove this notify widget so compile and save and go to graph uh, don't forget to change the playback speed to one because we don't want to have it faster compile and save and now we need to destroy it once the animation is finished but just removing from parent won't work here we need to uh, type in an uh, animation finished so animation finish and this one sl with slide in and once it's finished we will remove from parent 
which will be self, will be this notify widget. And now when you play the game, and pick up some item, open the inventory, it goes away. Now, another issue you might have noticed is when you're unequipping the items, it also gives you the notify widget, which we don't want because it's annoying and it's too many of them. Uh, so to fix that is go to play blueprint in your pickup function, pickup item. We will remove this pickup notify, create notify. Now, uh, we will need to make, we will need to check if this function was successful because we don't want to, if we're picking up the item and inventory is full, we will just be creating, you know, we will just be creating inventory is full and also pick up uh, item notify if we put it somewhere after we pick up the item. So we need to check if this was successful by adding return node. So here after set array element, add return node. We will add the output. This one will be success. I think that's how we spell it, 2C2S. It will be type boolean. And now if we successfully added the item into array element, it will be a success. Copy it here, paste it into after create notify. So if the inventory is full, it wasn't a success because we didn't pick up any item. And now we copy it one more time. And when we add a new item in the inventory, it was a success as well. So compile and save. And now we can go to our uh, uh, items and open interactable items BP. And here after we pick up item and before we destroy it, we'll paste this, uh, we'll get a player reference and create notify. So we won't do it in a pickup function, we will do it after we actually pick up the item. Oh. And do pickup. But we also need to check if it was successful because this is what I mentioned. If if it wasn't successful, if the inventory was full, it would write inventory is full from the pickup function from the pickup item function and then it would create another notify with picking up the item. So we don't want that, we will do branch check, connect this and if it was a success, so if it picked up the item, then we will create the notify and then we destroy the item. If it wasn't, we're not destroying the item because we're not picking it up because the inventory was full. Compile and save. Uh, and now we shouldn't have annoying notifies when we're unequipping the items. So that's all good. Uh, we can fix another issue and that is our pivot points that I mentioned on the gloves, for example, and on the armor, it's very far from the static mesh. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to your meshes open plate armor. I checked then the problem is only with the gloves and chest. So something that was high up on the skeleton because it kind of improved it originally, imported it originally with the skeleton. So uh, get the glove static mesh, plate gloves SM and plate armor SM. We'll right click, we'll Asset actions and export. Uh, save it in some folder. You don't have to change anything here, just export it. And save the armor, export that one as well. And now go to Blender. Just in the new project, delete these things. And now we can import FBX. We will import the chest first. So find plate armor SM, import FBX. Now it imported with the material. So just delete this material. 
and to change the origin is very simple just select the armor right click set origin origin to 3d cursor first which will move it to the middle and set origin and we will do geometry to origin which will move the armor down and you can export it like this but I don't like to have a pivot point in the middle I want to have it on the bottom so we can just select move and just move this armor a little bit down and now you have to do the same thing so just set origin to 3d cursor with armor selected there we go and now we can export it fbx save it where you got your meshes i'll save it same as played armor sm but just in case i'll put one after so we don't overwrite the mesh we exported uh, here you need to select mesh we can limit to selected object we can uh, in smoothing just do face armature and uncheck add leaf bones and uncheck bake animation and export now we can delete the plate armor we will import the gloves so import fbx plate gloves sm now here we need to make one small change because first delete the material but you can see the gloves are quite far apart and when you put it in the world it actually doesn't look very good uh, so to fix it we can just move them closer together select these gloves go to edit mode now we need to select every vertice in one of the gloves so to do that check toggle x-ray here in the corner now just select it and press the P on a keyboard and separate by selection. That will separate these two gloves into two meshes. And now what we can do is go to object mode, uh, turn off your x-ray, and now you can just move them closer together. I like to have them like almost joined. And now we can select both of them, Con hold control and select both and press on the keyboard control and J, which will merge it back together. And now we can do the same thing with the glove selected, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, right click, set origin, geometry to origin. Now we can export it as well, so file export fbx uh, select the plate gloves sm and just put one after uh, this should be all the same and now export it now we just need to import it to unreal so in your arm unreal you can uh, just open the content browser, go to your meshes, get the plate gloves SM and import it in. You don't have to change anything, just import. And then import your plate armor SM1. Make sure it's the one the one we just changed and import as well. There we go. And now, in our project, if we were to drag this into game, uh, first of all, we got wrong material, but you can see the gloves are together, and pivot point is right next to it, and same thing with the armor, pivot pod point being fixed. Uh, gloves are not actually giving us the correct. correct material because we moved it so hmm. there we go I don't know why it selected some weird material just change it back to Nido 2 or the one we're using for 
every armor and now save it um, what we can do is now uh, remove our main one so remove the or just first thing change it in the data table otherwise it will cause some issues so go to third person blueprints items data table here on plate gloves change it to change static mesh to plate gloves sm1 Comp save it and then change armor to plate armor sm plate armor sm1 and save that one as well file save all and now we can go back to meshes so third person meshes plate armor and we can delete now yet still we have to change it in the items as well my bad so go to blueprints items open plate armor open full blueprint and editor item mesh and change it to plate armor sm1 and same thing for gloves open plate gloves bp open full blueprint editor item mesh and change plate gloves sm1 and now we can delete the old mesh so third person meshes plate armor and delete the first one so plate armor sm force delete and plate gloves sm force delete now right click on these meshes folder and update redirect to references so there is no reference to the old one and we can now rename it so plate armor sm1 to plate armor sm and plate gloves sm1 to plate gloves sm save all and now that's fixed so the text is right next to it as well looks much better all right and that's all the improvement and fixes that we needed to do if you notice any more obviously comment on this video and we can just go over it next time and fix it and i'll see you in the next video thanks